Our show begins by asking Dr. Rodier, where does the fat go when you begin to lose it? His answer was surprising and can be summarized in the following video. How does fat leave the body? Knowing this can really help when trying to lose weight. Some people think it just magically vanishes when you exercise. Other people think it comes out when you go to the bathroom or it gets burned off as energy. Well, a scientific law called the conservation of mass is that atoms cannot simply vanish. They change how they are arranged, but they do not vanish. So what do fat molecules become? Well, the chemical formula for average human fat is C55H10406. That's a mixture of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. A 2014 study by the University of South Wales published in the British Medical Journal shows exactly what happens to fat when it leaves the body. When we don't eat enough food to create the energy we need, the body starts breaking down fat for energy. As we move our bodies and inhale oxygen, a complex series of processes occurs that releases energy, resulting in the production of carbon dioxide and water. As you learned in a previous video, exercise and intermittent Intermittent fasting, or not eating anything until mid-afternoon, creates HGH, human growth hormone, a hormone which breaks down fat when mixed with oxygen. For every 10 kilograms of fat, you have to inhale 29 kilograms of oxygen to help the hormones break down the fat. When you exert yourself physically, 84% of the fat is turned into and released as carbon dioxide, and 16% is turned into and leaves the body as water. That's right, fat leaves your body as you breathe. The heavier you breathe, the more fat you lose. And no, you cannot just sit there and do heavy breathing. That's called hyperventilating and you'll pass out. Sorry, you have to actually move your body. You cannot cheat the way you are designed. You must move your body in a way that naturally creates huffing and puffing. That, my friends, is how you burn fat. Also, we have found research originally published in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute that sustained weight loss for 180,000 women over 50 years old in the United States, Australia, and Asia led to serious reduction in breast cancer risk. We discuss this fascinating reality in relationship to the work of Dr. Warburg, who showed in 1937, that's right, all the way back then, that consumption of refined sugar depressed the immune system and fed the cancer cells. He won the Nobel Prize for that. We also discuss some medical research in Italy that claims that regular chili pepper consumption may reduce the risk of death from heart attack and stroke. This was not a small study. In fact, investigators compared the risk of death among 23,000 people, some of whom ate chili and some of whom didn't, by monitoring participants' health status and eating habits for over eight years. We are talking about lowering the risk of dying from a heart attack that was over 40% lower among those eating chili peppers at least four times per week. And death from stroke was more than halved. This is not necessarily something for those, though, with a sensitive stomach. We also discuss why Dr. Rodier and many other doctors don't recommend anymore taking a baby aspirin daily to reduce the risk of heart attacks. Turmeric is another good alternative to prevent heart attack and strokes, as well as omega oils. We also have a significant conversation about psychoactive drugs, including some of the legal, health, and social benefits and ramifications of their use, and look at some research into the negative effects of psilocybin, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms, on the emotions and on cognition. We further discuss the importance and value of consciousness research and the protections needed to protect callous and dangerous use of psychoactive substances. Join us on the next adventure into cutting-edge medical research and its continuing validation of the ancient hermetic teachings on integrative hermetic health with Dr. Hugo Rodier.